the Joe Rogan experience. We're always talking about how wrong they got the future in like space 1999. Yeah. <laughs> like those, remember, remember that television show? I like that show. I watch that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but all those shows, like even I think Blade Runner was like now, right? Didn't we discuss this like last year, 2019? Like we, we got everything wrong in yeah. terms of what the timeline was. The timeline is totally wrong, but I think that the overall, the overall direction is is right um, in a lot of this stuff, and we'll we'll get there. I, I really do believe that if if we don't end up killing each other, or have some horrible catastrophe like a asteroid hit us, we're going to end up living in space and have that kind of Star Trek future. I mean, I really think that's our destiny, as long as we don't screw it up. Man, how far out are we looking at Star Trek? Star Trek might take a while. Do we get like warp drive and all that kind of? Couple hundred years. And we got to find those dilithium crystals. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, she's breaking up. <laughs> yeah, like how far do you think we are? Like if you had a, a a wide timeline of like literally being able to go to another planet. Well, you know, I, well, going to Mars is something we could do. No, uh, in 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 a decade, if we really, really, really want to. Elon take. keeps saying that. I think he's right. I mean, it's. It's not uh, a question of technology. The, the big missing piece, I think, in, in understanding uh, uh, about what that would be like is, is the effect of radiation on the, on the human body. There's engineering solutions we could come up with for that. But this we, is for the prolonged journey, the six-month yeah. six journey? Once you start talking about well, – so, so right now, like on the space station, I took a bigger radiation hit than I would have if I stayed at home. But How much of a hit? Uh, you know, the, the amount of dose I took was not that much. It's like um, uh, like a, a tenth of a sievert or something. I mean, it's like it was pretty – What's a sievert? A sievert. If you take one sievert, uh, then you're increasing your chance of getting cancer, depending on your age and gender, about a couple additional percent. Can you mitigate that with supplements? Like is there iodine that you take or something along those lines? There, there's some uh, – you know, maybe antioxidants – but I think that that's, that's not a panacea. That's not going to fix this problem. It could help maybe. They say take iodine tablets, right, if you're exposed to radiation. Isn't that like something that they uh, recommend? Yeah, for like, for like nuclear reactors mm -hmm. or um, yeah. uh, and, and all that. But um, I think that protects the that protects, uh, function of some one, one of the organs. I can't remember. But it's not going to solve – that's not going to solve this problem. But you can shield yourself with anything that has hydrogen in it is a pretty good shield. So water is great. Like when I was on the space station, I, I put a big uh, water jug around my head. Really? <laughs> yeah, just I figured it couldn't hurt. And uh, uh, and then like uh, liquid hydrogen or even plastic that's made, that's derived from hydrogen uh, is, is pretty good shielding. Okay, so you could have like conceivably a, a light plastic suit that you wear that could shield you from a lot of the radiation on the way to Mars. There's actually a company in Israel that we're, is teaming with NASA. Mm. It's going to fly these like vests on uh, to try to shield the people. You can also put it in the hull, and or you can have just a storm shelter because there's basically once when we're on the space station, we're above all the atmosphere, but we're still below the magnetic field of the Earth. So we still get we still enjoy a lot of protection from radiation. Mm. Once you go out of that and you go to the moon or to Mars and you're basically hanging it out there. You're, you're, you're not, you're no longer protected by that. And so you're going to take either GCR galactic cosmic radiation, which is just everywhere out there. That sounds terrible. It sounds bad, doesn't it? GCR <laughs> galactic cosmic radiation. That sounds really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, um, uh, th those are ions up to, up to iron. So heavy ions, that there aren't that many of them, but when they hit you, they can do a lot of damage. Uh, they have a lot of energy. They're, they're accelerated to like near relativistic speeds, so like near the speed of light. Um, and then and then there's the solar. Then you got to worry about solar flares, uh, SPE, Ooh. solar proton events, and those don't come. Those are very like unpredictable. And, well, they're a little bit predictable with sunspot activity, but but they come every once in a while, and they're giant spikes. They last a couple hours to a couple days. And they could totally fry you. They're even worse. Than oh, the, fuck. Yeah. So conceivably, we could send people to Mars, and halfway there, they get cooked. Yeah. So you have a six-month window where you have to just roll the dice? Well, so what you can do is you can have a storm shelter, right, where you put, like, a lot of this shielding. And then if you, you could detect the, 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 the SPE, you, the GCR is there all the time, but the solar events, you, could, you can detect them coming, and you have enough warning time to get everybody into the storm shelter. How much time do you have? 
Um, usually when you first start seeing uh, some of the uh, uh, proton radiation, then um, uh, you start you, – you have like an hour. <laughs> so – you got time. <laughs> so you're sitting in that thing going, 48 minutes from now, it's coming. Ah. Yeah, and you're just like hunkering down there, oh. probably grabbing all the water bottles you can. And <laughs> wow. Yeah. And depending upon how big the ejection is, you don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah. It could be of different magnitudes and different durations. And it could just kill you even if you have the shield. It, the shielding. I mean, if it's a really huge one... Uh, and, and we didn't really have any capability of defending from it when we did Apollo. And there was a – between two Apollo missions, there was one of these big ones. Oh, boy. And we just got lucky that it was in between. So – That seems crazy. Like, what a what a nutty roll of the dice. Yeah. But, again, there's, there's – there's, and we keep getting smarter about it. And, 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 and I think, you know, for like right now, we can send you to Mars and bring you back. And, and uh, probabilistically speaking, you'd probably have like an additional – four or five percent chance of developing cancer over your lifetime wow. which is not like a death sentence you know it's but, a little it's a little uncomfortable yeah yeah but we're getting better and and the thing about it there's two things about it one we keep getting better technologies better shielding we can actually come up with there's there's ways you can do active shielding with magnetic you can create your own magnetic field around the ship and uh and and so it almost be like star trek with like a you know a force a force field or shields or whatever so we're, there's ways that maybe we could do that. There's also the other thing that we don't know. We know exactly what radiation is out there. We don't know exactly what that radiation does to humans. The best we have to go on is like data from some of the atomic bomb survivors and, and radiation workers that work in like power plants and stuff to take some dose. But it's a different kind of radiation. So right now, the error bars are really big. So our, when we say like, oh, 5% chance of cancer, that's taking a very conservative estimate. If we can find out what it really does to humans, maybe it's a lot more benign. And maybe we could sharpen that pencil and say, yeah, it's acceptable. What if people come back smarter? What if it's like some fucking X-Men type shit? Yeah, maybe you could like... You know? I mean, radiation is always bad in real life, but always good in comic books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, right? We Think wouldn't have Spider-Man if it weren't for the that. Hulk, Spider-Man, yeah. so many superheroes that were involved in some sort of an accident. Wasn't Dr. Manhattan, wasn't that a thing with him as well? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I you think know, from I, The Watchmen, I, I think he d d became who he is because of an accident. I, I, the Dr. Man, I, I believe so. Yeah. And I, I was hoping that, you know, I was up, I had my kids after I did that flight. Uh-oh. So I'm hoping that they would like one Those day. Those genius kids. Yeah. How or, old are your kids now? I got a nine-year-old boy and a two-year-old girl. Notice anything unusual about them? I did notice one day the two-year-old girl was concentrating on her blocks, and one of them started floating. But you know, <laughs> man.